So now that we've established the idea of what chromosome structure entails, specifically looking at DNA packaging and how that directly relates to how genes will be expressed, whether or not they are accessible or inaccessible, in that euchromatin or heterochromatin state, we can apply this knowledge by looking at some direct examples of chromosomal structural modifications, all that uh, tie back to gene regulation specifically. So the major sort of one that your notes focus on um, is one called histone modification. So we're going to do it right over here. It's called histone modifications. And you can do a variety of things to histones in order to regulate gene expression. If we go back to our understanding of DNA packaging, we realize that histones play a big role here because they are part of these proteins. They are proteins that the DNA is wrapped around. And if the DNA is tightly wrapped around a histone protein, would you say that it's accessible or inaccessible? Of course, that would mean that it's inaccessible. But if it's loosely wrapped around a histone protein in this nucleosome structure, it's more accessible. And this is what histone modifications are all about. Before we get any further into these modifications, we have to understand where they're occurring. And they're occurring on a region of the histone protein known as the N-terminus region. Remember, a histone is just a protein, and a protein has an amino end and a carboxyl end. This is the amino end of the protein. So we're going to write A, A, amino acid, end, just on the top as a side note so that we understand that the end terminus, terminus meaning end, this is going to be the end at which we have an amino acid just for orientation purposes. At this orientation, at this part of our histone protein, this is where we're going to have sort of a protrusion. This is a specific part of the protein that protrudes or sort of pokes out from the nucleosome structure. So we'll say from nucleosome. So what we mean by protrudes in this situation is the fact that we're going to be able to modify what is known as a histone tail. This protrusion causes the formation of something known as a tail, specifically a histone tail. If you think of a tail, a tail is simply a protrusion out of a um, larger body. Think of the larger body in this situation as the entire histone, and the entire histone has this tail on its end terminus that can be modified. So we're going to say there's a histone tail, in quotes, that can be modified. And this is the point of our conversation. We have to figure out what modifications can be done at this histone protein in order to modify chromosome structure in order to regulate genes. Specifically, the modifications done here are one out of two things, and sometimes even a combination of both. We can undergo something known as acetylation, or we can do another type of modification known as methylation. Two key, absolutely key modifications in eukaryotic gene regulation. Now, I want to ask you, would you think that acetylation and methylation occur in prokaryotes? They do not because prokaryotes do not have this advanced DNA packaging that we as eukaryotic advanced organisms do. Thus, they can't undergo this acetylation or methylation um, under the same extent that we do. So, if we look at acetylation, think of this word acetyl. We know what an acetyl group is. It's sort of a functional group. And all acetylation is, is you use an enzyme in order to add an acetyl group to this tail. So this adds acetyl group, so we'll say acetyl group, to the tail. Why the tail? Because the tail is the end terminus. It's the protruding end of our histone. And this is the part that can be modified. The modification I'm doing here is attaching an acetyl group here. What is this acetyl group going to do? Specifically, the acetylation process causes chromatin to be less compact. So chromatin becomes less compact. Now you should understand from what we've established in our previous video in terms of gene expression, if we have less compact chromatin, we have more accessible or less accessible chromatin. This chromatin is, of course, going to be more accessible. It's more loosely packed because it's less compact, less condensed, and thus we're going to have an increase in transcription here. This is going to promote transcription greatly. So acetylation, end-all, be-all, promotes transcription for these reasons mentioned. And of course, this is at the histone modification. What about the methylation side of the story? 
Well, now we can extrapolate our knowledge by stating that if this is when we add an acetyl group to a histone terminus end, what are we going to do in methylation? We're going to be adding a methyl group. So we're going to say this adds a methyl group to the tail. Methyl group to tail. Simple as that. But the impact of this methylation is a little bit different in terms of the fact that histone methylation, thus histone modification, thus chromosomal structural modification, thus gene regulation overall is going to cause, usually for the purpose of, the, as of this course, a decrease or less transcription, let's say usually. So one of these is going to promote transcription. Acetylation definitely promotes it. Methylation usually um, makes transcription harder to happen for um, many chemical, let's say, reasons that we don't need to get into. Just know that methylation, for the most part, is going to decrease transcription. Acetylation is going to increase it. This is all happening at the histone. Why the histone of all places? Well, look, the histone is tightly wrapped around DNA, and if you can alter that wrapping of the DNA, you can alter the accessibility of DNA. And if you can alter it through either acetylation or methylation, you're going to have gene regulation. Again, appreciate the complexity associated with eukaryotic gene regulation. Much more things are possible in this terms of in this gene regulation story. The last chromosomal structural modification that we'll go over is DNA methylation. So this is a direct methylation of DNA. Previously, in our histone story, we looked at the methylation of histones. Those are proteins, and if we methylate histones, we make DNA harder to access. Okay? It, let's imagine that the histone becomes even tighter in terms of its wrapping around DNA. What happens if you physically and absolutely methylate the DNA? Well, this is when we're going to specifically add methyl groups. So this adds methyl group to the DNA. Okay, group to DNA, but specifically, I want to be a little more detailed in this, to a DNA base pair. Um, this actually adds most of the time, let's say, to the cytosine. The cytosine is the one that usually gets methylated, and if you have a methylated cytosine, this is usually going to cause the DNA at that situation, at that methylation event, to be inactive. This will be inactive DNA, it will be inaccessible DNA, let's say. That's even a better word. Inaccessible DNA. And what do you think? Now you should be able to very easily tell me whether or not transcription is going to happen or not happen here. Inactive DNA, inaccessible DNA. Would transcription be promoted if we're methylating all these cytosines, these bases? No, it would not. We would have a decrease in transcription. We would not want to transcribe in this situation. And again, this is a very complex story with eukaryotic gene regulation, really dealing with many uh, complex chromosomal modifications, all based off of this packaging scenario that we've already mentioned. Overall, end-all, be-all to understand about the chromosome structure is that it's, of course, complex. There's this idea of being accessible or inaccessible because DNA is so complexly, let's say, packed in us as opposed to just being free-floating in prokaryotes very easily, you know, can be manipulated here and there. In our situation, we do a much greater job, much more advanced job of packaging our DNA, and thus we have much more advanced gene regulation of our DNA. DNA, as seen by histone modifications, DNA methylation, and many other forms that we're actually going to cover in our next video.